Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Anything else? Any other difficulty or defect? No way. No way. I'll handle that. Just don't just don't touch that, God. I'll take care of that. And what that generally means is no more than selfish self. And it has a lot to do with sex. And it has a lot to do with a lot of other things, too. Because this is what I'm talking about when the question was that. It says in here, but most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Now, imagine now what it's saying. Most of our life, other than the alcoholism and alcohol, doesn't fall under this category. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reproduce, to be somebody in a society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give man the instincts to help him stay alive. It says there's nowhere evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctual drive. So far as we know, it's nowhere on, nowhere on record that God has completely removed any human being from all of his natural drives. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, isn't it strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose? When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or do us, that is the point at which we which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for here for us here on earth. That is a that is a measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. But what they're referring here now, it said over here, it says every normal person wants, for example, to eat. Now what's he what's it mean by eat? That means pig out. That means get fat. That means overdo something because it says over here, when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures that are possible or do us, then it says to reproduce. What's reproduce? Same thing. Sex. So you see, they're covering ground here that has to be covered for identification that I'm willing to have a perfect release for my alcohol. Alcoholism. It says that. Why then couldn't I, by the same means, be granted the perfect release from anything else that possibly could be there? You see, in the beginning, I didn't know this, but Alcoholics Anonymous was put on this earth on June 10th, 1935, and Dr. Bob and Bill Wilson got together to treat alcoholism. It was put on this earth because there was nowhere else that an alcoholic could go. They had to die. Less than 2% stayed sober. The rest had to either get drunk, go to the institution, or die. And that was on record since man first crushed grapes. That's exactly what it says. It says that in step one. But we've had this problem all these years. And it's always about the same thing. It's always about living in the world that we're in, that we can't live in, that we have to do and we have to create and we have to do things for our own pleasures, our own desires, whatever we think is best. Here in this step here, it's talking in here, haven't been granted a perfect release from my alcohol. Why then couldn't I be granted a perfect release from any other difficulty or defect? You see, it's already stated in the steps. It's already talking there about problems other than alcohol. It's already said this. It's already there. Why couldn't I then, in the day I'm in, if my if my if my alcohol isn't there, my alcoholism from drinking isn't there, why then couldn't I use this program of recovery for maybe 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 uh, my job? Maybe in a relationship to somebody that I might love. Why couldn't I do this? If God couldn't take away the mania for drinking from me, why couldn't he do that too? Because this other was so 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 devastating, it kills people. It really does. It damn near killed me. But then I don't look at life like that. I don't look as I need God here and there. I only need him someplace where I think he's needed. And so then that's the time I'll turn it on. That's the time I'll pray to him. That's the time I'll acknowledge it. I'll petition them, I'll, I'll request something or something like that. This step here is a lifetime job. It's a lifetime practice that I must be entirely ready to have God remove all my defects of character forever, today, now. We're building a character from living with this character with a power that down in two said it's a power greater than me, three says it's God, and now here in six says, I'm entirely ready now to have God in my life. 
forever. This hasn't got anything to do with religion. I used to argue against this because I was ignorant, uninformed. I didn't know what I was arguing against. I was full of fear. I was scared of the word God. I was scared that you're, you're, you're going to dump something on me. I was always, always going to self, all the time. Always worried, always thinking in terms that I can make it alone. I don't need this, not really. I can say something and, and fool you. Maybe I can fool you and make you believe I'm praying to God, living with God, talking to God, doing God's will. No, I ain't, man. You'll find me out in a big hurry. We have an opportunity here, every one of us as alcoholics with alcoholism, to find a way of life that's guaranteed for each one of us. Guaranteed. So the necessity of being drunk. My, my sponsor said, I'm going to show you a way of life where drink is not necessary. I'm going to so, show you a way of life that's not a trial and error. It's not a hit and miss deal. It's there all the time. It'll never fail you. You'll fail, but it'll never fail because God doesn't fail. He said, yeah, I'm going to take the bumps out of the road. I'm going to show you things that you need to know about a life that you're living. And he said, just imagine. You can have everything I have plus what you can acquire. Just imagine how much that is. And that's true. That's this brotherly and harmonious action. That's just carrying this message to the next fellow sufferer, alcoholic, that we do here. To carry a message isn't about a rat race, isn't about yesterday's struggles, yesterday's behavior, your neighbor, your wife, your kids, your job, the IRS. That's not what it's about. That couldn't be. So what's it about? It's about living in a world. When they say happy, joyous, and free, happy, joyous, and free means what? means to me, away from me, away from my mind, away from the life I produce all the time. To be able to have this, genuinely, you see, God gives me this. And when he gives it to me, you can't take it from me. And the reason you can't take it from me, because it's permanent. It's permanent in the relationship that I build with God. You see, before this, everything was temporary. Everything was. You could call me names. You could cheat me. You could hurt me, harm me, talk about me, badmouth me. And I'd get upset. My mind would go to hell. You can't do that now. I, my dependence is total dependence because step six says that this is a lifetime job for me to be entirely ready to be with God forever. And see, this isn't religion. This isn't church. This isn't dogma. This isn't ritual. This isn't a God of names. This is a living God for my life today through the program recovery, which is why Alcoholics Anonymous is here. Because if it didn't have that ingredient in it, what would it have in it? Where would you go? What could you draw upon? I've looked everywhere, i tried everything, and there's nothing there. But the moment I went where I'm supposed to go, to a power greater than me, which is God, he's the Lord of my life today, this day, that means exactly that. I have exactly what he says I can have because it's his will that produces it. His God consciousness is in my mind, only by application. By myself, I can't do this. With the strength and power that is coming from God, it's there. It's always there. God will never fail. I might get scared. I might look at things a little bit cockeyed. But believe me this, I don't have to live like that. And I don't have to carry that. I don't have to make a mistake and suffer all day long because of it. I don't need to. Step six, I believe it's important to talk to step four and step six. That this is a way of life, a lifetime job. This is not all steps of that way. We're building a character that I'm producing today by living with it today. Maybe we ought to answer some questions before we go to lunch. Uh, uh, Randy's going to tell us when we can go. So uh, there were some questions brought up here. So do you believe in working the steps the minute you get sober? You know what? I really do. Yes, I do. I absolutely do. And the reason why is the fact that, is that I never knew what was wrong with me. I never knew the message. I never knew that this day that I'm in, does not have to be with the days I was in. Because I spent the first two and a half years, there's no way that I knew what, what I was doing. I, there's just no other way. I was staying sober. And now, now listen to this. Uh, hear what I say. In them days, staying sober, the first two and a half years, I was doing everything as best as I could. My very best. I meant well, and I tried to do well. And this means exactly that. I was going to meetings, steady. I was praying to God, steady. I was reading the book, the steps, steady. I never been away from it, not even one day. But you see, there was an ingredient left out, and I didn't know it. So I performed in the day I was in. 
I'd be at meetings like this, and I would be ripping everybody apart. I'd be judging them, criticizing them, and the meeting is too smoky, and the speaker don't know what he's saying, and this, that, and everything else. I was in quarrel with life for two and a half years. I drove my car worse in two and a half. I fought more people sober than I did drunk, only because of who I was. You see, going to meetings, staying sober, the steps were not in my life. I was not changing. I didn't do anything different other than the drunken behavior wasn't there. You bet I believe in it. This one says, how can I only look at what I did to people when most of the people I did something to did do things to hurt me? <laughs> no, it, it, that's real true. It's real true to think that way. When... Whoever wrote that question, on page 60 to 63 in your big book, where it says, I had to be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. And then it ends at the top of 63 where it says, I was reborn. Try reading that. Try reading it. Try reading it. Because you see, it talks on page 62. And what it says in 62 is exactly what it means right there when it says that. But it's in the big book. And I'll just read just a sec, just a, just a couple lines as well. And... Uh, It says, so, so our troubles we think are basically of our own making. They arise out of ourselves. And the alcoholic is an extreme example of self-will run riot, though he usually doesn't think so. Above everything, we al alcoholics must get rid of this selfishness. We must or it'll kill us. But God makes that possible. So when, when you're looking at the world from, this, from eyes and a mind that's disturbed or it's hurt or it's warped from the alcoholism, there's nothing you can look at that is of any consequence of any good because you're fault-finding. You've got a mind that's wrapped up with self. You see things distorted. They're warped. They're aberrated because of your mind. You think people are taking advantage of you. You think you've done so much, now they should do so much. Everything is cockeyed because it's always about self. And this is, this is real, what, what that question is. What is the application or practices that I carry before the steps and from one, two, three, etc. simplified for daily practice. You know, uh, that that's that's another way of looking at it. <laughs> that's what the fly said when he walked across the mirror. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so you come to Alcoholics Anonymous. You come here because it's the only it's a poor to last call in my book. There's no place else to go. And when you come here, you're bringing, you're bringing some, a world with you that's really a hurt world, a harmed world, a world of real struggles, adversity, and everything like that. And the step application starts immediately. When the step application begins, it's not when you join AA, you come through the door the first time, but when you start to apply principles by application and steps, that's the program recovery. Coming through the door is necessary, needed, but the change of character, the building of the character, starts only in step application. Step one, all the way through. This is what we've been talking about. Please explain what you meant in step five by, number one, accepting who I am, and two, what I am. Well, the, the accepting it is, is, a, is a state of mind where in the day I'm in, that the self-honesty has to be built and self-honesty to self. Now, that's, that's, that's real, that's real, it was real difficult for me to believe that I, I'm doing something wrong or whatever it is. Self-honesty is really self-honesty to see the world or the situation or the behavior of myself the way it really is and what's really there. Who's at fault? You know, I used to think, I used to think for a long, long time that other people were to blame. Other people were faults. They, they were the ones that was doing it. You see, I never realized, and I learned this first in the Sermon on the Mount by Emmett Fox, and I learned it in the application. It's not what I see that bothers me. It's what my mind tells me about what I see that bothers me. Now, figure that one out. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And if you don't think so, just think, why is it sometimes you can look at something and you don't like it? The next time you look at the same thing again, and it's Okay. Nothing wrong. This is about four questions in one. 
if you keep recapping, does it mean you haven't hit bottom? Is the idea to hold down the spring or let it go and pray? Does step one have an application? If it does, what is it? Simplified or is it an introduction to application? What is the application practice of step two? In step four, what are we putting down? Just today or what kind of thing in the past or what kind of things? We'll go for four first. You know, uh, what I said before, four isn't, to me isn't hard to take an inventory. I've done an awful lot of inventories, myself and others too. And inventory is taking stock of what's in there now. Uh, means exactly that. The things that are in my life today, this day, the things that I'm going to write about are always things that are, I'm conscious of. It's a consciousness of remembering things or looking at things and seeing things. And these are the things I can write down because the character that I am, the true inner man that I represent, not the man up here, the man here, is already built. It's already established. I am this person here, not up here. Up here, I mean well, I'm opinionated, I can change this way, that way. Down here, I can't do it. It's impossible. So you see, to look at me, I have to really start doing something that only through the step application, through what step four represents. See, When I make a searching and fearless moral inventory of me, it's about me today, this day. Even though it's going to come from yesterday's, that's okay. I'm not going to go looking for things or blaming things or trying to see things that are not there by, by going somewhere. Who I am in the day I am, I can write that. I can sincerely, honestly, and I believe any of us can do it, so long as you realize that the things you're writing down are coming from your mind, your power, yourself today. They're not in the memory bank of any kind where you have to open it up and search it out and see, well, he treated me wrong, that's why I'm wrong. If you're not thinking about that today, you can't put it down today. You can put down what's in your mind today. Are you this person that you're writing about? Yes, you are, because that's your mind. You wrote it. It's coming out of your secret place. You're putting it down. Nobody else is doing that. That's why step five has to be there, to accept that as a person, as a character that I really am. That's a real hard thing to accept sometimes, because it gets covered up. It gets hidden in your good works, and you can't do that. This is means why step two and three are there, so you can do four. If two and three wasn't there, you can't do four, period. The character cannot make a searching and fearless moral inventory. He'll make an inventory, but it'll be his pleasures. It'll be from where he wants to go. So I'm shut him down. He can go on forever. <laughs> Lunch break. Is it, we off? We off? We off. <laughs> I'm Bob, an alcoholic. We're starting off the, this afternoon, and we're, we took off from step six. We're still on it. We haven't closed it up yet. You know, in, in step six, where it says I'm entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, uh, I've already said some things about it, but there's a couple of things that are maybe I think that should be talked about or, or at least presented anyway. And uh, it's, it's just that if we ask, God will certainly forgive our derelictions, but in no case does he render us white as snow and keep us that way without our cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try to, as best we know how, to make progress in the building of the character. Now, remember I said before that for me, I had to learn the character, the word character is very important because I brought a character here, like I said before, and then in the step application, in living a life today, this day, now, each and every day, is building a new character, building a character now by principles. As I live these principles, I'm building the character. This isn't something I'm getting ready to do tomorrow or benefit from. This isn't something where I'm boning up on it today. I'm studying today so that I can have a better tomorrow. That isn't that at all. My disease of alcoholism needs to be treated as I live my life today. And now the important part about this is that to hear this over and over and over again, I know I had to personally hear it over and over again, because I might hear something ten times and maybe get a piece of it, a portion of it, maybe none of it, who knows. But the disease of alcoholism is on all the time. It's repetitive, it's re repetitious, it's, it's, a, it's a power, it's a strength. And so this means, though, 
that if the new character isn't being built, the old character's got to show. In other words, I'm going to do my own thing all the time. And step six is where I'm entirely ready to have God in my life forever. That's what it says, a lifetime practice. So no matter how I look at this now, that means that this day today, no matter what goes down, no matter what happens this day today, I still have the the power, meaning God, I still have the opportunity, meaning the application of steps, to change or to do something instead of a, a, a agreeing with or taking this as something that I, I, I don't know what to do. Every time I do this, it seems to fail and so on. The building of the character is a character that I live with. I'm living with this character right now. And so the disease now has to be always considered as an ism, alcoholism, a live thing, a thing that's in me growing all the time. The only difference is it has to be treated. And that's the purpose of the 12 steps. That's the purpose of Alcoholics Anonymous, so that, that we can change. We can have a way of life that's different. It's different because we're different. The reason we're different is because there's something is to happen to us. Something's changing. That was way down in step one. That was the application, starting to build a new character by principles. And during this time, well, there's always things that are being added in the day I'm in by application. Because the power that's there in step two turns into a God in three that allows me to have something I'd never had before. Now, I don't know how you look at this now, but but I didn't see it and didn't know it at all until it, it was shown to me, it was evident to me, that there has to be something here all the time. Now, meaning in me, that I can't draw from me, I can't run to me, I can't, no matter what goes down, I must have a relationship, I must have a dependency upon a power, a God, for my life, total, all, everything, all my affairs. So now we, we get up in step six. In four, five, and six, the character was being built. So I already started in one, two, three, four, five. I'm in six. Six right now, I'm entirely ready to have God in my life forever. It says that. It's a lifetime job. It's a lifetime practice. So step six. You know, I, I misread this, and I, and I didn't get it very right in step six. And as the ending of it, I get kind of mixed up in here. It says in here, if we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a, a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes toward perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how howling we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? Well, see, that there was something that I read this, but I don't put no purpose there. I don't put no importance there. I don't look at this as like I'm out in the world I'm in, and things are going along pretty good, and there's no trouble, uh, nothing seems to be hurting me, harming me, causing me trouble. And so what's this idea now about prayer, about the conscious contact, or about wanting to have something in my life other than what's there? Because, you see, no matter where I'm at, there must be something with me other than me, because if it's not, then I'm there. And this was established already down in the steps as I learned, too, of why I have to have a power greater than me that can restore me to sanity. And three says, yeah, I can have it. All I have to do is make a decision, a decision to turn my will and life over to his care, God's care, as I understood him. Understood him has already been explained that there's a power greater than me. And this is in the program recovery. Step three says this is I understood him. I never had a God in my life, never prayed to one. How can it be understood? It can. Because what it says in two, an application for principles so that I can live in the day I'm in, that I can have something now that I never had before. And this is what's necessary and needed for my life, that there must be something there instead of me. And remember what I was talking about in two, the open mind and the quit arguing. Now this is what I'm talking about is the character that I am in step six. It's the same character that I built starting from one. So I'm taking principles in my daily life. In six, I can stop arguing. I can have an open mind. In six, I can have the willingness from step three that this is a character now that bases his life on spiritual principles, which are the willingness. I just got through naming them. They're principles. They're truths. 
they're spiritual in their nature. They have an origin. They started somewhere where they're proven, and they'll keep proving themselves because it's like a mathematical principle. Two plus two is four. There's nothing you and I can do to make it say anything else. It says in step two that scientists have a principle. Search and research, always with an open mind. That's a principle. They live by the truth of search and research with an open mind, and then they keep going. And here in Alcoholics Anonymous, I find out that I, as an alky, living the day I'm in, I have to have more than what I have got, and that's me. So I, it's, a, it's, a, 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 it's self-evident, it's agreed, that I must do these things, or otherwise I can't have, it, can't have it too. This calls for self-discipline. This calls for self-sacrifice. This calls for me. Like right now, this is discipline, if you know it or not. Sitting right here, all of you, any of us, all of us, this is discipline. To discipline yourself, to come to a meeting that's, a, that's going on right now, and you might not agree with me. I don't know if you do or you don't. It's, it's not important. But what is important, that you are here. And the discipline that you're putting out is for your life, because you're not here for me, and I certainly am not here for you. This has got to be understood, that there's a purpose here, now call it synonymous, so that when it's, when it's going to meetings, I'm going to meetings for a reason. I'm not going there for a popularity contest. I'm not going there because I haven't got any place else to go. I'm going there because my life is in jeopardy. If I don't go there, I'm liable to have to go to hell. I'm liable to have to get drunk or die. And I know this because my past track record says that. Just because i got a lot of years of being sober, the disease is still on. It's an ism. And it's a mind-controlling disease. It's already been established through the steps that we went through already. We started in ABCs explaining behaviors, thinking, living, that you can't do a damn thing about it, that you always will keep repeating a performance that you did, and you'll do it again. This here disease of alcoholism is a deadly disease. It's devastating. I've, I've had babies in Alcoholics Anonymous that took their own lives, sober and drunk. And the reason they did it, it wasn't because the one guy shot himself in the brain. That didn't kill him. What killed him is his brain killed him. Because he couldn't go another day. And he was sober. He was not drunk. And the reason he couldn't, because of alcoholism, a state of mind, a way of thinking living, couldn't stand anymore, couldn't go any farther. That's not to scare you, but it's to identify the disease when it's not being treated. You know, it's the same thing. I had another baby that stuck a garden hose up the tailpipe and put it in his car and gassed himself to carbon monoxide himself right out of the picture. And about a couple of days before this, he was on his knees pleading with me to give him the God that he knew I had. And I said, I can't even give it to me. How can I give it to you? But each and every one of us, though, can have exactly what we need to have in a day we're in according to the will of God and the program recovery and application, building the character this day for this day, not building it for tomorrow, not getting ready and study and study and study and then tomorrow you're going to use it. I did that. That's the way I lived for a long time. I was in a rehearsal. I was in a rehearsal every day. I wouldn't even go to bed at night for a long, long period of time. I was out there working and, and 12-stepping and reading a book and everything else because I was going to get better. I was going to be able to do something tomorrow. I was going to be able to have things in my life. And they never happened. The rehearsal was there. The main event came and went. I didn't even see it. That's the story of alcoholism. That's the story of any alcoholic that I know and the disease isn't being treated. So see, in step six, there's so much to say in step six about being entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character forever. Not just a one-shot deal, not just once to get someplace to finish something or to get past something. It isn't like that. The steps are daily application so that the person or the character or the alcoholic that I am with alcoholism, I don't have to live that way no longer. I don't. Because the new character has got something now I never had before. It's got a power that isn't me. It's a power greater than me. I learned it's a power, but I also learned it's called God. Then through my own life, I learned to call him Lord only because of me, not you. I'm not telling you to do nothing. I'm not saying you have to do anything. But I had to do something. And the moment I did it, I had exactly what I was told I could have. And this is true. True for all of us. If you want what we have and are willing to go to any lengths to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. It says in there, some of these we bought. I had to find an easier, softer way. But I couldn't do that because the easier, softer way all the time 
itself trying to figure out how not to do things or how to do things so I get more out of it or whatever. And this here means exactly this. The steps are application, a purpose, a reason, so that I can have myself today, this day. I came for me a long time ago, and I'm still here for me. I am not here for you. So this has to be established. That's not a selfish thing. That's not a thing where I'm saying that you don't count. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying something that's really important. That if I don't have this in my life for me, I'm going to die. I am going to die. So step six, we come up now. Remember I was talking, I was telling you, from step one to six is always about the disease of alcoholism. It's always about me and what's wrong with me and what I need to do. This is in step application now, in principle, from one to six. It's always about the disease and what's needed. And this means a great deal to me because, you see, step seven to 12 takes on new meaning. For me, it does, the way I know, for sure, because of what the steps are and what they say. Because they do say something that's very important, each one of them. Every word in here is very important. It's not something to skip over and say, I read it. Yeah, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Maybe I agree with it yesterday, I don't agree with it today. Maybe my mind is in control today. And there is no God there, there's me there. Because you see, my own track record tells me and shows me when I behave out in that world out there, when I have adversity, trouble, when I see things I don't like, these are ominous signs. The first time any anger comes, the first time I want to run you off the road, the first time I want to criticize you, judge you, you know who's in control now? Me. You know why? It's because there's no God there, there's me there. And the reason God isn't there is because I won't let him there. And this is true for every one of us. God will never do anything for you that you won't let him. Because you won't. And this is true. I know I said before that these things I'm talking about, when it's internal, when God is internal in me, it's permanent. You can't take it from me. You can't run me off the road. You can't cuss me out. You can't, you can't harm me where I lose my life. I can throw it away, but you can't take it from me. I had to learn this by application. The character that I am is backed up by the power of God. And when it's backed up by the power of God, I'm a different character. I don't need these defects. I don't need my yesterdays to judge you today. I don't need to remember how to behave for certain people to get certain things. I don't need to. I can face this world for what this world is today. And I can perform in this world today. And then I have another good world. I have another good day. But it's all backed up by this program recovery and application. This brings me into step seven. And then step seven, and it says, humbly ask God to remove my shortcomings. And there's a lot of controversy about this step. For many years, when I first come here and through the years, that it doesn't say this, it doesn't say that. Well, let me tell you. I had a sponsor, the step mayor of God man. He lived the way he said he lived. And I tried to do what he said he was doing. And I couldn't do it. No way possible. And yet I kept trying. And I didn't know what was the matter with me. I didn't know about this closed mind. I didn't know about the disease of alcoholism, how it's argumentative, how I can't be satisfied, you can't please me, how things out there, I want them different. You give me something and it's fine. I'll throw it away and get something else because that wore out or that doesn't look good anymore. This is true, but I have to look at this more than what I'm talking about because maybe you, if it, you're an alcoholic with alcoholism, maybe you don't relate to me because I'm a garage mechanic. Maybe you don't relate to me because... I do things that you don't do. But how about the mind behind it, though? How about the restless, irritable, discontented? How about Dr. Silkworth when he talks in the, in the big book, in, in the foreword, when he talks in there, alcoholics drink for the effect because they're restless, irritable, discontented. Until they drink, they're restless, irritable, discontented. They have to drink. I had to drink. Why? Because of my mind. My mind wouldn't let me be in the day I'm in. It wouldn't, it just wouldn't accept things because of who I am. If you don't acknowledge me, pat me on the back, credit me, stop about that and think about that. Why would you want to hold a door open for somebody? Why couldn't you just open it up, let it go and walk through it and forget about whatever's behind you, let it hit them in the face or something like that? Why couldn't you do that? What's stopping you from doing that? See? Well, what stopped me from doing it was getting caught. I'd let go of that door if I thought I'd get away with it. But if I had to hold it for any length of time, I had to do it under protest. I had to do it. I smiled maybe, and I thanked her, or you thanked me, and I took it or something like that. 
But really, that wasn't me that was doing it. I was made to do that. You put me on the spot and I had to perform because I don't normally perform that way. It's like, you know how many times, now, to look at this, you have to, I have to look at it and had to learn it by personally, myself, in my life, looking at everything the day I was in. There are certain things I won't do. It's not my job. In my own home, it's like doing dishes. You know, did you ever see about this? You know, we go to a retreat up in San Lorenzo all the time. And all of these guys, we go up there with maybe 30, 40 guys, you know. And we all eat and all that and stuff. And you know, these guys do them dishes out in there in the gal in the scullery, you know. And they just happy, joking, having fun. When they go home, I wonder if they do the dishes at home like that, you know. See, up there, it's a little different story, see. The principle... Believe me, these are true. It's like I was at a meeting one night. This is up over in Colorado. And it was late at night. My wife called me up at the meeting about 10 o'clock. I got two little girls. She says, would you bring home some milk? And I thought, I hung up. I didn't say anything to her. I hung up and I thought, she's home all damn day. How come she didn't get that milk? You know? <laughs> the hell, I, it's snowing outside. I want to get home, man. I don't have to go to no store. So I go to the store and I get the milk. And I go home and I give her the milk. And I give her a dirty look to boot. <laughs> Isn't that something? If somebody has to behave like that, when it's it should be, I should be able to do something like that and feel good about it. I should go and actually feel good because I'm doing something that means something to somebody. But no, huh? it interferes with me. But how many other things? How about everything in my house? Or how about everything at work? How about giving a hundred percent? My sponsor talked about this in the word go. He told me that from now on, he says, anything you do, give 100%. 100% is not 100% of 100%. It's 100% of what I got. Whether I got 30%, 40%, 50%, give 100%. In other words, give your best shot in the day you're in, in all of your affairs. doesn't make no difference what it is. And he says, there's another thing. He said, first things first. That's another thing. And I couldn't, I didn't know what first things first were. First things first. <clears throat> it means exactly in the day I'm in, when I wake up. There's things to do. There's things that are in a priority form that have to have attention. These things I don't want to do sometimes, and I don't even want to look at them. I want to put them in the drawer and forget about them, or I just want to get away from them. I can't do that. That's what causes an unmanageable life. <clears throat> That's doing things the easier, softer way. I'd rather do this instead of that. The principle of the character that I am, I'm building a character today in the program recovery to respond to life according to the God's will and the program recovery meaning principles. As I build this life, I live this life. As I live this life, the life I'm having now is the life God says I can have. Because it isn't wrapped up with selfish self. Remember back down on page 62 when I was reading in 62 where selfishness, self-centeredness is my problem. My problem is my own making. I'm self-will run right. I don't think so, though. But you see, all of this is tying in in step application and character building. So character building is still on all the time. But you see, character building is a way of life. It's not a numbered, numbered step. It's not. It's not. It couldn't be. The reason it couldn't be is because I don't live by numbers. I live by principles. I live by trouble. How do you handle trouble? How do you handle success? How do you handle happiness? How do you handle relationships. How do you do anything? See? And if I have to do them by the numbers, I'll never be able to think that fast or remember what page that was on and I'm lost again, see? So this is important. Now, this, you know, what I'm saying is daily occurrence. Now, maybe this day would turn out for each and every one of us where everything was perfect. Possibly, almost perfect. Anyway, nothing's perfect. But see, what about the days that don't come like that? What about the days that all of a sudden Something new happens. Something new comes into the picture. Maybe not from the old, maybe from the new or the old. The character that I am, I can go through any door. I can meet any adversity. I can see exactly with my mind, not my eyes, what needs to be done, and I do it. This is the guarantee that each and every one of us need to have in Alcoholics Anonymous, that this is a way of life. This is not about step application by numbers. It's a character change that lives by principles, principles for my life. As I live my life, the principles are there, and as they're there, that's the life I have. So I keep saying this almost in every step, because it is in every step, because it's a change of character. It's a building of a character. 
but it's already cut and dried. Twelve steps in the twelve steps. Step seven is so for me. It was so hard be, until this man come along, this Elky come along, and started to show me a performance in a day I'm in about what giving means. And I have to be a giver now. I can't be a taker no more, because you show me an alcoholic that hasn't got treated alcoholism, and I'll show you a taker. I'll show you somebody that demands out of life and out of people performances that can't be met. This can't be. It's impossible. And this means exactly that, that my mind is the power. My mind is the one that controls. To have humility and humbleness, I didn't know what the words meant in application. I know what it means in reference to the word, but not living it, I don't know. That's why these words I said before, remember I was talking about words like acceptance, like willingness, like surrender, like so many words that we, we have a vocabulary here in Alcoholics Anonymous that helps my life in the day I'm in because I live that vocabulary. I am that vocabulary. My life is in that application. You see, when I came here, there's so many, so many other things to look at, to consider, but there isn't really because of the character that I represent. You know, I'll tell you this. I don't know about you, but to, ha to surrender, the word surrender, to surrender. You know, I used to think surrender was when you quit, you give up, you just stop it. You see, how much of this is important to you, I don't know. But let me look at it this way. I had to anyway, is that if I did stop, if I did quit, which I did, I quit the bottle, I quit the bars, I quit drunkenness. What did I do then? I didn't do nothing then. You know what happened? I stayed the same. Nothing changed. Nothing did. I was just sober. I was still the same character. I had everything in me that I had in me when I was drunk. But I'm sober. And I can't change. I can't do anything about that. Money don't fix it. Possessions don't fix it. I had them all. I did them all. I got the same gal. I took to the drinking days. Same thing. Doesn't make no difference. So what, what is this, see? Well, what it is, surrender is not quitting. It's not stopping. It's an ending, but it's a beginning. It's a beginning of a new life. It's an ending of the old life. Surrender is quitting, but it's also starting, starting to do something else. Now, you see, I, I couldn't look at anything like that because when I said I, was, I surrendered, it was a done deal. It was ended. It was finished. I did it. It's okay now. No, it ain't okay because what I surrendered, I surrendered only maybe a thought, maybe a minute, maybe, maybe an hour or something. And then what happened? I took it back because I did not change. I didn't build a new life. I was not a new character. I was still going to the disease, and I still was the man I always have been. And to think that many meetings would cure that, stop that, no way. Because why would any, any one of us, after we're here a while, why would we have to repeat a performance where you get hurt, where you hurt people? To look, see, I have to keep looking inwardly. I can't look at you no more. I didn't back then. I had to learn to stop that. Because when I hear something too many times, I get bored. I think, I don't want to hear this anymore. Hell, you said that ten times, a hundred times. No, I didn't. The reason I didn't is the same reason I said before. This is now. Back when I said it before, it was then, not now. I have to be who I am now according to the will of God and the program recovery of the building of the character. So no matter what it takes, I still want to be where I'm at with God and the program recovery. This is how I do it. This is how I live it. It's because I do it through the steps to build a character. Then they turn into principles from the step. Now I can do this as a way of life. I can continue on. You know, there's so much to say in seven. Now, seven is another step. It's really a big, big step. We talk forever on it because it's a living thing. Now, try to remember what I said. Step one to six, to me, is always about the disease. It's always about what's wrong with me, what it is that's wrong with you, what I need for me, what I have to do. That's one to six. Seven to 12 now is a different proposition. Seven to 12 is where my disease is being treated because I'm living it. I'm living that life that treats that disease, seven to 12. Seven it's, is a performance step. It's a step now that I'm going in the world I'm in. I'm going in this world today in application to do something. Now, this means serving man and God. This is what step seven says. And this is all about humility and humbleness. It says here, it says, since this step so specifically concerns itself with humility, 
We should pause here to consider what humility is and what the practice of it can mean to us. Indeed, the attainment of greater humility is a foundation principle of each of AA's 12 steps. For without some degree of humility, no alcoholic can stay sober at all. Nearly all AAs have found, too, that unless they develop much more of this precious quality than may be required just for sobriety, they still have a much chance of becoming truly happy. Without it, they cannot live to too much useful purpose or in adversity be able to summon the faith that can meet any emergency. Well, see, this is true now. This is something I can buy this. I can, I can agree with this, and I can want to have this. I'm not quarreling no more. I've got an open mind. I've got a character that's being built. And this means exactly that, because it says in, these, in all of these strivings, so many of them well-intentioned, my crippling handicap had been my lack of humility. I had lacked the perspective to see that character building and spiritual values had to come first, and that material satisfactions were not the purpose of living. Quite characteristically, we had gone all out in confusing the ends with the means. Instead of regarding the satisfaction of our material desires as a means by which we could live and function, as human beings, we had taken these satisfactions to be the final end and aim of life. That's exactly what I did. I got mixed up again. I thought that living and life was the same thing. Down in three, when it says I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God, if I understood him, I got mixed up. I don't know what that means. As I started going along, the name of the game was winning. The name of the game was acquiring. The name of the game was getting more money, cars, women, Success, boats, motorhomes, racing, having all of these things. I lived it. It was mine. It was there. And I thought that was, man, that's what this name of this game is all about. That's not what it's about. I was still the same character inside of me. I still drove everything, acted everything, did everything the same way I always did. And here I have things I thought would give me success. I said, I have things in my life now that I thought, Man, I'm going to be a happy son of a gun if I get this, I get it. I'm going to be happy if I get that. And I'm going to be happy if I get that. And I'm keep going and going and going. And I'm never happy. I'm still fighting the world. I'm still turning on people like a rattlesnake. I'm still doing the same thing all the time. And I don't know why. I just can't figure this thing out. And you know, step seven, it talks in here. It says, this lack, lack, lack of anchorage to any permanent values this blindness to the true purpose of our lives produced another bad result. For just as long as we were convinced that we could live exclusively by our own individual strength and intelligence, for just that long was a working faith in a higher power impossible. This was true even when we believed that God existed. We could actually have earnest religious beliefs which remained barren because we were still trying to play God ourselves. As long as we placed self-reliance first, a genuine reliance on a higher power was out of the question. That basic ingredient of all humility is the desire to seek and do God's will was missing. Step seven is turning me around completely because of what step seven means in an application. You know, you take, you take a performance that I'm in and a day I'm in. You know, I can't give. I don't know how to give. I don't know how you are, but I know me. I, I look at things as mine. That's mine. I got to have that. I don't want to lose that. I got to keep that. It's mine, mine, mine. Everything's mine. But I look at everything that way. It isn't just one or two things. And so I don't know what this is. You see, you remember, you know, the, how many times does somebody hit you up for money? Say a street person hits you up for money. What's your reaction? What do you say? What do your mind say? See, my, my mind used to tell me, you ought to go to work. He looks bigger and tougher than I am. He looks good. He ought to go to work. I ain't going to give him nothing. He's panhandling. He'll probably go and spend that on booze or wine or something like that. That's what my mind told me. And this is long ago when they had street people that were legitimately street people. These were people that were really street people. And I would still criticize them and look at them with contempt. They shouldn't, they shouldn't bum me. They shouldn't attack me like that. They shouldn't come up to me and say these words to me. It upsets me. And I don't even know that this here, this way of life, I'm in step seven. God has given me back my life. He's given me my job, the ability to make more money than I ever made in my life. And I am making that money. I'm buying things. And I'm possessing, owning things. I've got my name on it. I own it. I've got the title. 
And I think, no, I'll give him a buck. I'm a buck short. I ain't going to do that. Yeah. My thinking, my thinking is always that way. I couldn't genuinely, honestly, give with my heart open to feel empathy or to feel compassion for somebody like that. No way. No way. I might do it if you force me into it. If You might do it if you're watching me, and I think you, and I know you are. But to genuinely live this life, think this way, do this, no way. But there is a way. That's what this step is about. But it's much more than that. It has to be much more than that. Because this is where the dependency that I thought was in three, which is the foundation, the basic life for every one of us is in three. But it must go farther. And the building of this character now is in the day I'm in, in application. Application, so the character I am today is with the application. Now I can be the man God wants me to be. He gives me the power. I am that man. But you see, it has to be understood with me that this is a way of life. This isn't something that I'm going to look at now and then. This isn't something I'm going to do when I'm in trouble. This isn't something I'm going to do because it was a certain day, a certain meeting, a certain time, something like that. No. I must be this character for my life. My life's important to me now. It's very important to me. I don't want to lose any more of my life and like I've lost before. I'm not talking about drunkenness. I'm talking about sober and Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm talking about how many days and how many hours that I've lost through my own selfish self, through my own desires, my own pleasures, my own wants, never once ever caring about you or me. And yet here is talking to me, step seven. It's very, very strong, very serious about the way it's worded and what it says. And it talks in here about how pain is the healer. You sure it is. You bet it is. It talks in here. It says, I, I was forced to learn something about humility. It was only at the end of a long road marked by successive defeats and humiliations and the final crushing of my self-will, self-sufficiency, that I begin to feel humility as something more than a condition of groveling despair. Every newcomer in Alcoholics Anonymous is told and soon realizes for himself that this humble admission of powerless over alcohol is the first step towards liberation from his paralyzing grip. See, down in one, I never knew that. I didn't know that. All I knew down in one is that the principle of one is that I'll never be able to drink alcohol again as long as I live. And I can do that 100% because it says that. It's the only step I can do it, 100%. Just because I don't have to have alcohol in me. But how about my mind? How about that? That's where the problem is. I can't do that 100%. I can't just turn my life all over to care of God and walk away. Now I'm okay. This alcohol wasn't from here on out. No, it's not alcohol wasn't. The power that's there, the purpose of these steps, the purpose of the application of step seven, so I can serve man and God. It says this right in this step here. It says that I can live now in a world that God wants me to live in. And this is true. The reason why it says... It says, so it is that we see, first see humility as a necessity, but this is the barest of beginnings, to get completely away from our aversion to the idea of being humble, to gain a vision of humility as the avenue of true freedom of the human spirit, to be willing to work for humility as something to be desired for itself, takes most of us a long, long time. A whole lifetime geared to self-centeredness cannot be set in reverse all at once. Rebellion dogs, dogs are every step. Now, you see, I read that as a cop-out. I read that as I could excuse my behavior because it takes a long, long time. It doesn't take a long, long time. It takes a long, long time if I don't do it. The program of recovery, the program of recovery is a program of recovery. It means exactly what it says, that I too can have this, but I must do this. And what I have to do is already being explained in the book and what I'm saying in application. Because I can't keep what I've got and use that anymore because it causes nothing but trouble. And it's already established in my life by my own track record to me that this is all true. So why not have something now? Why not be from step two, open-minded? Why, why not quit arguing, step two? So why not do, do something now that's possible for each and every one of us? And this is step seven, I believe, is where it really starts. I know it does. I, I believe it. No, it is, it's my life. It turned me around in a world because of what I have to do. And what I have to do in step seven is I have to be a giver. Now, the giver is something that I don't know about. Now, giving could be money. Maybe giving is just a kind thought about you, whoever you are. That's giving. Maybe that's what God wants me to do. Instead of tearing you apart, 
he might want me to stay. Let's, let's relieve your mind of the bondage of self. Let's make your mind clear and clean of your defects. Let's do something different. Step seven says I can do something different. This is what it's about right now. See, because this here now, it says, during this process of learning more about humility, the most profound result of all was a change in my attitude, our attitude, toward God. And this was true whether we had been believers or unbelievers. We begin to get over the idea that the higher power was sort of a bush league pinch hitter to be called only upon in an emergency. The notion that we would still live our own lives, God helping a little now and then, began to evaporate. Many of us who had thought ourselves religious awoke to the limitations of this attitude. Refusing to place God first, we had deprived ourselves of his help. But now the words of myself, I am nothing, the Father doeth the works, begin to carry a bright promise and meaning. This is where I, this is where, for myself, when this alcoholic was telling me about step seven, and he was talking about this character building, that character building and spiritual values had to come first. And so it started to dawn on me a little bit more about me in the day I was in. Because the things I started to look at and see in the day I'm in, according to the will of God, by what I was in the day I was in, in a relationship to God, praying and talking to God instead of self, all of a sudden now, I could see things that I couldn't see before. And when I seen these things, there were always things that I recognized that something should be done. Something should be done. And this was true now about my life everywhere I go. Now, this don't mean necessarily out on the street. This don't mean that it's only one place. It could be any place. It's the same reason why maybe you see a piece of paper on the floor and you want to pick it up and you don't. Something tells you to pick it up and you don't. Later on, you wish you had picked it up. What do you think that is? How about the same as the door, holding the door open? God tells you, hold the door open. So you hold it open. Well, it isn't God, actually. It's a God consciousness. What it is is principles. What it is is seeing others instead of self. This is step seven. This is application. Now, this means that I can consider you. I never considered you before. Something else was always ahead of you. My thoughts or whatever I wanted to do or whatever it was. Step seven says, no, no, it don't, it don't work that way. You've got to become a giver. And you know, in step seven, step seven ends in step seven the same way that what step six is talking about, meaning the same thing, having the same identity in application. And so step seven, now, it should be talked about because I believe this is the step that goes farther, farther, farther than any step in application because of what it is that you're doing. Because this means to be a giver in the day you're in is a giver in all your affairs. This is the, where unconditional love comes from, too, by the way. This is where you can have somebody in your life and you can accept them for who they are without wanting to change them. To really appreciate that person and tell them so and mean it from your heart. Instead of carrying around an attitude or carrying around looking and finding fault and then still carrying that package around with you, thinking it's okay to do that and it's destroying your life. It's cutting your life short. It's robbing you of minutes, maybe hours, maybe days that you, you, should, have, you should have something else there instead of what's there. You know, I never knew, you know, that the, what I'm talking about, I never knew what I was talking about of this right now, is that the day I'm in, I have a mind. It's a power. And whenever it goes to self, I have to take on the whole package. I have to take on the disease of alcoholism and the fullest form that it produces. Even though I only do it for a minute, a second, in my car maybe, in a restaurant or somewhere, I think in terms that it's okay to do stuff like that. You see, I don't know that when I do things like that, there's a section of me with me. There's a portion of my life. God isn't there. And when the disease is on, it's on in its fullest effect. It isn't on just to show me a little bit of anger I show you. I have to give the whole package because the character I am has the anger, so you have to take the whole, I have to take the whole character. And I'll dump the whole character on you. Now, I might not dump it all on you with words or mouth or something like that, but my mind is still going the same way it's always gone. It's dissatisfied. My mind is screwed up. 
is angry. And then when I go somewhere else from there, I can't function as well as I should because part of me is still with the anger, because part of me is still in control. And even though I say I'm a good guy to myself, not you, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's okay. It's okay to do that. It's all right. Who cares? It doesn't make any difference and so on. Yes, it does. It makes a hell of a difference. To have the whole program of recovery for what the recovery offers is a way of life. It's a method of living. It's in the moment. And the moment is now. The moment isn't tonight when you go home and pray or whenever you might think it might be. If you don't have it now, you don't have it. Because how could you? Where, where could you possibly, or how could you possibly produce something just by conditions? It's right now to get mad. It's right to, get, to, to say this, to say that. Could you live by that? That's what the disease does when it takes over. It's the disease is the power. It tells me everything there is to know about the way I'm going to act and think. And step seven says, though, that this here has got to be on all the time. This here God is not a bush league pinch hitter. I don't call God in because I get screwed up or I get in trouble or somebody's hitting me, harming me or something like that. So I've got to have God with me all the time so I don't have to get screwed up and hit me all the time. This here is step seven. No, I can't have that without being a giver. I must serve man and God. That means exactly this, what we're talking about. It says, we saw we needn't always be bludgeoned and beaten into humility. It could come quite as much from our voluntary reaching for it as it could from unremitting suffering. A great turning point in our lives came when we sought for humility as something we really wanted rather than as something we must have. It marked a time when we could commence to see the full implication of step seven, humbly ask him, God, to remove our shortcomings. You see, to take away something, that shortcomings, there's what that is is the lack of being able to give, the lack of able to see other people, the lack of me, the, sh the shortcomings of me, not to consider you, to go ahead in the life I'm in, still by myself, still trying to attain or obtain things and see... Step seven says, no, we'll have to build a character. It's got to be based on the character building and spiritual values. Spiritual values is what we're talking about in AA in the program recovery and application. It says so. It says so in the foreword of your, of your 12 by 12 here. And I read it before, and it's always the same thing. Alcoholics Anonymous 12 Steps are a group of principles, spiritual in their nature, which have practices a way of life, practices a way of life will expel the obsession to drink and enable the sufferer to become happily and usefully whole. The step seven is telling me the same thing, but it's telling me more than just words like that. It's telling me a performance that I must give and how, I'm, how I have to give this. It says, but when we have taken a square look at some of these defects, have discussed them with another, have become willing to have them removed, our thinking about humility commences to have a wider meaning. Now, what they're saying here, and I, I, I know this well, I, and I, I know it by heart. I, I don't need the book to even look at it. But I want, to, I want you to realize, or at least to know, that what I'm saying is in the book. It's in print. It's not what I say. It's not what I say is the correct way. This is the way. And what it says, but when we have taken a square look at some of these defects, what step is that? What step? Four, right. Have discussed them with another. And have become willing to have them removed. Six. See, here it is. This is step seven. And it's telling me this. That I can have something now. It says, but this by this time, in all probability, we have gained some measure of a release from our more devastating handicaps. We enjoy moments in which there is something like real peace of mind. To enjoy, to, to those of us who have hitherto known only excitement, depression, or anxiety, in other words, to all of us, this newfound peace is a priceless gift. Something new indeed had been added. Where humility had formerly stood for force feeding on humble pie, it now begins and means the nourishing and ingredient which can give us serenity. Step seven is a very, very quality living step. As I live my life, quality becomes important, imperative. I must do it. I have to do it. Because of what it says to do. You see, before this, I was always associating defects of character and shortcomings as the same thing, and they're not. They're black to white. They're totally opposite. They have to be, because I would never be able to do shortcomings if I didn't get rid of defects. 
if I'm still selfish, self-centered, if I'm still the same man, carrying the same package from four of my defects, do you think for one minute that I could be a giver? Do you think for one minute I could perform in step seven if I'm still step six and still hanging on to my old ideas? I'm not entirely ready to have God remove all these things. No way. Step six is needed in the building of the character so I can build a character and go into seven. Seven is total, total opposite. Step seven does not need step six. It's just by itself. But I have to build the character with seven and the other steps. So there's no quarrel going on. There's a performance that I must do. The performance that I must do now is already cut and dried. It's in print. It says so. It says exactly the things I have to know. It says here, as we approach the actual tape taking of step seven, it might be, well, if we A's inquire once more just what our deeper objectives are. Each of us would like to live at peace with himself and with his fellows. We would like to be assured that the grace of God can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We have seen the character defects based upon short-sighted and or unworthy desires are the obstacles that blocked our path towards these objectives. But now, clearly, see that we have been making unreasonable demands upon ourselves, upon others, and upon God. This is about shortcomings now. This is about things I should do that I don't do. This is always about this man talking to me. He said, hear me out. Don't quarrel with this. See if it won't add something to your life. See if it won't have, give you something that you think is necessary. You'd be a fool to throw it away if it does. And he was, it was right. Because I didn't know what humility and humbleness, I didn't know what an application for the day I'm in means. That this here are things I've got to do. I've got to do these things. You know, the things that I do in the day I'm in, try to think. I do certain things in the day I'm in, and it makes me feel so good inside. And I might not benefit from it. From it. Sometimes I do. Who knows? But the important part about it is my life is important. And I live in my mind. I live in this world inside of me. I don't live in that house over there in a certain address or something like that because I can be just as sick over there as I am at a meeting. But I do live in my mind. And to have a mind that I never could have before, it becomes very obvious that something's happening to me. Something's changing. I look at the world differently. I look at you differently. I don't have the same thing inside of me that tells me to think and act accordingly. I don't. This is a guarantee for each one of us to step application for a change of character, to live differently, be differently, have different, is for each and every one of us. There's not a one of us that's excluded. The disease of alcoholism says you need it. Disease of alcoholism does not come in degrees. It doesn't come in sizes, shapes, or forms, or colors. The disease of alcoholism is a mind power disease. It'll affect every one of us. doesn't make no difference who we are. It'll wreck your life. It'll kill you. It'll put you right back in places that you never want to go again, but you'll go there just because of the disease not being treated. That's the purpose of this, here, this workshop here, is at least to hear the message. Now, whether you agree with it, I told you before, it's only my opinion. It's a way that I found for me to find a way of life I couldn't have before. So the quarrel shouldn't be there because step two says that you have to stop the debating society. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? It says you must have an open mind. And this is all I'm saying now, is that maybe, maybe there might be something here today. I don't take these days into days that just are there because they're there. There's something special going on. And this is, I know this for sure, that years ago, I was blind as a bat. I couldn't hear well. I used to tell these guys that I need a hearing aid and glasses. And they thought I meant the thing right here. It was because I couldn't hear and I couldn't see. And I was a young guy. All I could see was alcoholism. All I could see is troubles. I was always on the disease side. Never was I ever on the recovery side. I was sober and I'm still thinking the disease way. I'm still thinking with alcoholism. I'm still looking at my problems all the time. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if he doesn't do this? What if he doesn't do that? What if I don't get this? What if they take that? All of these things. Sober. Being sober. Not drunk. Sober. After many years. To think and to accept a day like that, I'm not going to pay that price. I'm just not going to do it. I don't need to do it. 
This here life I'm talking about is a guarantee all the time. This is what the other called spiritual principles. They're already established. It's not something I'm creating. It's not something that I put there. But it's always for me, like it's for you if you're an alcoholic with alcoholism. So this means exactly what, it's, what I say it means. There is a way of life here. Now, you, you and I, all of us, any of us, we can pick and choose. We can throw away this and throw away that. We can do this and not do that. But you see here in Alcoholics Anonymous, it's a cut and dried proposition. You build a new character by sp spiritual principles. We, in Alcoholics Anonymous, we don't come here to get modified. We don't get here, we come here, and then you give me some stuff, and I'll put it with my stuff, and then we'll go out in that world again. See, no way. Page 63, when it says, I was reborn. Reborn is what I'm talking about. Reborn means only a new character. That's why the third step prayer starts in step three, on page 63. To be relieved of the bondage of self, so that I can have today, this day, what I desperately, badly need all the time. And that's a power that's greater than me, a way of life. A way of looking, thinking, acting in a day I'm, that I can do. I can do this. You know, in step seven, I said that it says <clears throat> it says in here the same thing. It says on on page sixty four in your twelve by twelve. This is page seventy six, and then sixty four. It says the same thing. It's worded a little different, but it's the same thing. So steps. So this is step seven. It says the seventh step is where we make the change in our attitude, which permits us, with humility as our guide to move out of ourselves, from ourselves, towards others, and towards God. The whole emphasis on step seven is on humility. It is really saying to us that we now ought to be willing to try humility in seeking the removal of our other shortcomings, just as we did when we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. If that degree of humility could enable us to find the grace by which such a deadly obsession could be banished, then there must be hope of the same result respecting any other problem we possibly could have. Then in steps, remember in step six on, on the top of 64, it says in there, having been granted a perfect release from alcoholism, why then shouldn't we be able to achieve by the same means a perfect release from every other difficulty or defect that we possibly could have? That's the riddle of my existence. Perhaps the full answer lies only in the mind of God. In other words, what step seven says, and then what step six says, is the same thing, that God can and will do this for us if we'll let him. Step seven, there's more to talk about in seven. The most, the, the, the thing that I'd like to maybe get some questions on or something like that is to be able to identify a little more of step seven in application so that you can see maybe yourself in the day you're in what's, what step seven is all about, what shortcomings are all about so that you can identify your own life in the way you live it, so that you can see that there is something to do that maybe you didn't do. Maybe you didn't want to do it, maybe you didn't even know to do it. It wouldn't make no difference. The point of this is, is that the character building, I can always do something the day I'm in so that I can always go ahead, and I have to go ahead all the time. Go ahead spiritually is all I'm talking about. Being able to perform today because it is today, not because of yesterday, not because of any tomorrows, but today, this day, to grow spiritually is food. I must eat this food. And this food comes from words. It comes from prayer. It comes from all things that God says, I can have. I can have this. I can have this and more. But I have to live this, though. To live it is what I'm talking about all the time. Because living it is always in the now. It's never in the future. It just don't happen. It just won't happen. This sponsor I had, I told you about, when he said, when I wake up in the morning, if I don't start this program of recovery, he meant the character living it. He says, you haven't got it. Because when would you start it? Sometime later on in the day? When would you start it? Most of the time, I never start it. Most of the time, I'm getting ready to start it. Most of the time, I know better, but I don't do better. This is all about application now. This is all about an individual. Nobody's preaching nobody's pre I'm not preaching at all because you can do as you damn please your life is your life my life is my life I live in this secret place you live in your secret place I found out that this Alcoholics Anonymous program I need to have more I need to know more and I have to do this because of the spiritual progress but God will constantly disclose more to me all the time he does all the time and the way he does it is always the same way just live in the world that he says is his world by his power 
the God consciousness that's in me responds accordingly. And this is a guarantee every time. Instead of that, all the other, what I would do would be self. Self would have to figure it out again, how to think and act. This is true. We went through this already. So on the questions, anybody got any questions? You, you should be putting them down on paper, and we'll collect them as we go along here. And we'll try to get them out here as quick as we can to get as much done. As, you know, it says, uh, some of the questions, we'll go ahead with it. <clears throat> it says, where does your new relationship with God come in step? Where, when does your new relationship with God come in in step seven? Uh, come in. Oh, no, come, come in. I don't quite get it. In step seven, Bob, work. This new relationship you've established in three and four and five and six. What? Well, how is it? How is it applied in step seven? Oh, in step seven. Well, it starts out right away. And what I was talking about, maybe I didn't say it. Step seven, the way it's worded, humbly ask God to remove my shortcomings. See, so humility and humbleness. It's, it says it right down farther on the same page about how today humility and humbleness is always a, a, in man's achievements of his own doing and everything. Humility and humbleness is depending on God to supply and do everything for me in the day I'm in. Mean, God gets the credit. I don't. I go to God. See, down in 2 and 3 is where the basis of this started. And then in 7, an application is that humility and humbleness, I go to God. See, down in 2 and 3 is where the basis of this started. And then in 7, an application is that humility and humbleness is not taking credit, not recognizing and identifying self for progress, for good things, for do things, and everything else like that. To have humility would mean that I'm out of the picture in recognition, identification, acknowledgement, so that I don't become egocentric again, or so that my ego is in the picture all the time. To give God, God credit for my life and all of my affairs is what humility and humbleness means. That I'll call upon the will of God, the power of God, to help me in my life, regardless of what's going on. Doesn't make any difference. That I do want help from God. And this means exactly that. That humility and humbleness, that I can look at this world today knowing by the grace of God, I'm where I'm at. I have what I have. I can count my blessings today through God's credit, God's recognition, God's praise. This is none of my doing. My Heavenly Father is taking care of me. He's supplying me. But that's an attitude that I live in, in when I apply my life today. The humility and humbleness. This self is not in the picture. Self is not. You don't have to blow my horn. I used to blow my horn all the time. I used to tell everybody how great I'm doing. How much I do this and how much I do that. How I spend money on this person, that person. How I do all kinds of things and I want credit for it. I want acknowledgement from somebody because I'm telling somebody all about my good behavior, my good actions, my good thinking. That's that's exactly what this is about, step seven. Is to be able to walk in the day I'm in under the grace of God, the humility and the humbleness has to be there. It has to be there because I walk under my own grace. I'm looking always at my accomplishments, how great I am, how I need to be treated special, and so on. So this is an endless thing what I'm talking about, but you have to look at humility and humbleness as something, as something that's needed. It's needed. Otherwise, I have to go the other direction all the time. Give an example of how God does for you what you cannot do for yourself today. Well, this, is the, this is the same thing again now about where I live. I live in my mind. I live in the world that I am is in my mind. And to be able to live without the rat race, without the hatred, the anger, to be able to do something and feel good about it, Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.